All right, in this video, I'm gonna be taking out this uh, this map light overhead console in a 2001 Ford Excursion so that I can work on these lights. I've, I've actually already fixed it, but uh, I wanna show you how I did it. So to get this off, this middle sunglass holder here, there's a screw right in the middle that you need to take off first, which is already out. And then you kinda just wiggle your fingers underneath it and it's got some clips that just pinch and hold it. Just give it a pull. Pops out there. Same thing up front. This one you have to pull a little bit harder. There you go. The back isn't going to fall all the way because it's got little hooks. These little hooks that, that catch it. So that it's not supposed to fall all the way. I just dropped it. but And then a bunch of, of uh, wires to undo and you're done. Here's the unit once I got it out of the truck. Um, these map lights are what I'm going to be working on. This is what it looks like from the back side. I've modified it a little bit because I, like I said, I already completed the project and I just wanted to be safe, so I added a fuse here. Anyway, the lights are here on this side, and then you've got the uh, like the gas mileage um, uh, display up here up front, and um, a couple more wires. The switches all on here. So I'm gonna be working in this area on this side to get these lights out. I'm gonna use I, I have a screw if you can find a little something to pry it, I have a screwdriver that I use for prying stuff all the time and I it's got a bent tip and I sharpened it a little bit so I can get in cracks better. But you don't have to have something like that to do it. <clears throat> you want to attack it from this side because this side has um it's got like pieces of plastic that go into the the unit and you won't be able to click it out. You have to click it out from this side. So uh, I just kind of pry it. See how these little, these little knobbies right here, these little nubs go into these holes. If you try to pry it from this side, it might um, crack those off. But on the other side, these these are made to come out. So pry from this side. This is the problem that I had. This is the uh, the uh, the unit that comes stock from the um, from the factory, and it looks like it shorted out or the, the copper ripped through. So I built a new one, and I'll show you how I did it using copper foil. It works just fine. Works just fine. Get a little twist on these lights, pull the light bulbs out, a little twist, pull them out, and uh, I'll show you how I do it. First thing you're going to want to do is release the release this when it comes from the the factory. This copper is bent over the end. It's bent over the end, kind of like this, and then it's clamped down with this black plastic clip. All right, to get this out, I, uh, I kind of lift it up a little bit and then wiggle it back, trying to get around these two side clips. Sometimes I have to push them down out of the way a little bit. And I keep pulling and prodding and trying to get it around these clips. Like I said, these hold it from the side. I use my, my tool here to kind of pry it out of the way. And boom, that's it. It comes off. The uh, like I said on this side, the it's folded over inside this little clip thing. See how it's folded over like that? If I open these up, it's folded over and it goes around this this piece of plastic, and then this kind of goes over the top of both of them and squeezes it together like a like a sandwich. That's exactly how it does it in the, uh, the factory version that burns out really easy. So this is the original printed circuit that um, these light bulbs, it sits on top of the plastic housing and then these light bulbs go through these holes and then they pinch down and they squeeze and then they connect with these copper rings. And that's how it gets, uh, that's how it gets the power. The one that I made is not nearly as uh, 
I don't know. Not as fancy, but it's a little bit thicker copper, and it works great. And I made it for, you know, however much this much copper cost. So this, I was wondering what I was working with here. And uh, if I peel off a piece of this copper, because I want to know how thick it was, and I measure it in millimeters, it's about, I don't know, 0 0.15 millimeters. I don't have any copper that's 0 0.15 millimeters. What I have is some some stuff that's 0 0.2 millimeters. So, you know, th this is what I'm gonna use. And um, I already made, obviously I already made it, it works great. So I'm just gonna show you how I did it. Cause I think you can't buy this printed circuit. I don't think this is available to buy separately. I think you have to buy the whole console um, or I, I couldn't find this. So I'm gonna show you how I made it. And it works great. So I'm going to take the original, just lay it across. Household scissors cut this thin copper great. No problem. It's uh, super easy to do. Just make my little cuts here. And then what I'm going to do is just keep on whittling this down. I, sometimes if you want, you can use a, a marker or a Sharpie to like mark the outline of exactly where you're cutting. And for me, I just kind of hold it with my thumb and then I just cut it until I get what I want. So let me pause the video and I'll come back after I've kind of cut this out. I don't think you need to watch me doing that. It's pretty easy to do. Okay, this is what I just cut. Cut this out. So it doesn't need to be, I mean, there's a couple spots that do need to be the right size. They need to be pretty close to exactly the right size. Most of it, however, it just needs to be about right. One of the important spots is this, this, I don't know, this uh, protruding bit here that plugs in. I do need to be the, I do need this to be the right width because the plastic on the overhead console uh, actually won't let it be any wider. So you, you do need this to be the right width and uh, the right length. So cut this out pretty accurately. The other part that needs to be accurate are these holes here. These holes need to be just big enough for the light bulb to be able to go through, but not so big that these uh, contacts fall through, right? So you need to be just big enough. Here's the one that I made already. Just big enough that the light bulb goes through and it's gonna to have to have these tabs cut out too because it's got uh, little tabs on the light bulb. Tab here and a tab here and those tabs have to go through. And it goes through, it goes through this copper piece and it goes through some, a plastic piece on the, uh, on the overhead console and then you twist it to lock it. And then these tabs don't let it fall out. Okay, this is super easy to do. It's not, not complicated at all. You just have to be technical and mechanical enough to use household scissors and then just be patient. And then uh, let me work through this a little bit more and show you where I'm at. The first thing I'm gonna do is trim this down so it's exactly right. And then I'm gonna start cutting these leads up through the middle. See how it's got these leads, these copper leads? I'm gonna cut this up and make it three leads. And later, I've gotta make it so it goes all the way. This, this middle piece is the ground. And then these two side pieces, which don't touch. See how I cut it out here and cut it out here? There's no touching. The whole thing is kind of held together after I cut it with some, <laughs> with masking tape, actually. Uh, if you've got a better idea, leave it in the comments, but uh, this is how I did it, and it works. As long as the copper is bare here, don't put the, the masking tape over the copper that needs to touch the contact points on the light bulb right on these areas. Everything else, I kind of wrapped it in masking tape, I guess electrically to protect it, but then also um, to help it hold its shape, right? Because this is three separate pieces of copper held together with masking tape to make one circuit. Okay, now I've uh, cut this down so it's the right width. 
Now what I need to do is start making these three leads, which I'm going to do by marking what I want to cut off, if that makes sense. Let's see if it zooms in here. So I'm going to kind of cut it off in here. I'm going to cut something off in here. I'm going to call that good. Let me get cutting for a second and show you what I do. So let's say right about here. And you know what? If you mess up, it's okay. Because this copper is cheap, you just start over. And each time your, your uh, prototype will get a little bit better. Made one cut. This is going to be a positive on one side. And because I don't want this to rub up and contact the middle piece, which is the ground, I have to take away a little bit of copper here. So I'm going to take another swipe at it right along here. Boom. See how I cut this little guy out the middle? Cut that little guy out the middle. So now it's, it, it doesn't touch. It's got a gap. And I might need to make that gap bigger. Um, just depends on how comfortable I feel that the copper won't touch from one hot side to the ground side. Let me just trim a little bit more off. Like I said, this copper cuts real well, which is common household scissors. A good pair of scissors, household scissors. These aren't hardware scissors. Yeah, that's about right. Let's do another one here. Gonna run it right up, going straight up. Again, it's not rocket science. If you mess it up, just grab another piece of copper and start over. It's uh, cheap. Boom. All right, so there's the middle piece that I cut out there. So now I've got three leads, three three pieces here. Actually, I changed my mind a little bit. What I'm going to do is I am going to tape that together so that it can't move and fall apart. Right here on the end. I'll cut this off later. Might be kind of hard since I'm putting two sticky sides of the tape together. But anyway, this is held together. So... It's not going to wiggle, and I can cut other pieces, and it's held in, you know, relatively the same place. I think what I'm going to do instead, I told you I was going to keep cutting up. I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to try and make these holes first, because, like I said, these holes up here, these are also two pieces that need to be almost exactly the right size. And so if I mess those holes up, you know, there's, there's no point in working on the rest of it. So... Let me make sure that these holes, that I get them pretty good, like cutting, figuring out a, a good way to do it. Last time I drilled a hole through it and then used a, a Dremel tool to route it out the right size. I think what I'm going to do this time, though, I think I'm just going to cut it and then cut the circles with, with scissors. It's just so easy to cut. I think one hard part about it is, again, making sure it's exactly the right size and I'm not sure if I can cut that tight of a corner with these scissors, but I'm going to try to cut on the inside here. See how this has a cut right down the middle? Sooner or later, i got to do it anyway. So let me just do it right now and see how it goes. Cut it right down the middle here. And then, you know what? While I'm at it, since I'm already cutting, let me just run this over. Make a tight turn right here and connect and make this first side clip done. So this is going to be one positive side. The middle piece of the Y is going to be the, um, the ground. And I do need to cut some more copper off so that never at any point do the two come together and touch. See how it's held together with that piece of masking tape here? That's why I did it. Let me cut another little thin section off so that there's no, no concern that they're going to touch each other. There you go. So those two should never touch at any point. And if I'm even worried at all in the middle here that they're going to touch, I'll trim it down even thinner. If you got some edges that stick up this copper, you can pound it down flat or just kind of bend it with your fingers. Let me work on these. I'm going to start cutting this out with the scissors, and I'll get back to you. Okay, I cut this circle out. You'll notice it's, it's actually kind of tricky because these big scissors, they don't like making this little tight, 
tight corner here. As I cut it, it bends this edge up. That's okay. It's nice, soft, pliable metal, so I just bend it back. Put it back right where I want it. And um, start kind of figuring out if this hole is big enough. I think what I can do is I can tape it to be big enough. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it about where it is right now. I'm going to make sure that this doesn't touch at all. I think when I'm done, I might have to cut this down a little bit. There's one other thing you might want to consider. You'll notice how with the, um, the one that they made, there's a big gap of openness right here in the middle, right here in this middle section. And that's because the light bulb is behind the copper. So if you make a big flat piece of copper here, the light can't shine through to light up your cabin. So if you'd like, you could also open this section up a little bit. And maybe I'll do that just for fun. I didn't do it on this one and it works okay. But let me do it on this one just, just for fun to see if I can. So uh, let me lay this out. just want to get an idea of where I'm going to be cutting. So I can just kind of remove all this stuff if I want. Remove that section so more light can shine through. And uh, I'll show you what my product is when I'm done. All right, there it is. I cut it out. Now I had a little bit of, because I'm cutting these sharp corners, I had little edges that were sticking up a little bit. So I just laid it on a... Uh, a hard surface and then just kind of pounded that copper flat again those little tiny edges were sticking up it's really hard to cut around the corners I don't think I'm gonna to need to use the Dremel tool this time I do think I'm gonna to have to widen this gap a little bit I don't want there to be any contact widen that up a little bit there you go no contact now I'm gonna lay some masking tape again to pinch it and hold it right here uh, maybe across this whole thing and hold it so that while I cut the other side, this isn't flopping around and um, getting messed up. And then I'll come back to it. I'll show you when I'm done. All right. Like I said, I'm holding this in the right spot. Just gonna slap some tape on it right there just to hold it temporarily. Now I'm going to actually add all the tape in the middle. Because remember, this, this middle piece, um, none of this has to move very much. So I'm just going to start taping the crap out of all this to hold it down. Kind of like I did here. It needs to be pretty strong because I have to bend it in all kinds of different directions. And I, whatever happens when I'm bending it, I don't want these pieces of copper to touch. But you can see this is two separate, sorry, three pieces of metal. I took one piece of metal and made three. three oh, sorry, three, one piece of metal into three pieces. There's this, this center piece of metal, which goes right down the middle. That's the negative, and then it's got two positives. So each light can run independently. That's your circuit. That's it. Let me tape it all up, polish it off a little bit, and I'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to trim away some of this excess tape here. But um, otherwise, I like it. I think it's going to work. I might even keep this one version 2.0 instead of version 1.0 because it's got these extra holes in the middle which let more light through. We'll see. We'll see what works. All right. That's what we got. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take off the tape at the points where you actually want the electricity contact. So here. These pieces need to be bare. These three pieces down here need to be bare of tape. Yeah, the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of trim this um, tape here. You remember I put tape over, over this, top, this top piece here? I need to trim it to make sure that when the light goes in, that there's some bare copper for these terminals to touch. Once that's done, the whole project's done. One last thing that I'm going to do so that when I try and fold these copper tabs over and plug it in so that they don't wiggle back and forth and touch each other, I'm just going to put one piece of tape on the back side, not the front side. The front side is going to fold over, so these need to have contact. I'm going to put this on the back side, this piece of tape, so that they just have something to give them a little bit of shape, something to just kind of hold them where they're at.
and then if I had a sharp razor blade, it would it would cut this, but I don't. All right, so there you go. I put it on the back side, not the front side. Now I can install the whole thing, my two light bulbs. Push that plug through. Put this one down, and I've tested this a couple times. I've gone back and forth, and I've had to readjust a little bit here, a little bit there. Plug this in. It twists great. The, the first twist is hard because you're kind of mashing that copper a little bit and kind of forming it to what you want it to do. But after that, the twisting is easy. So I think it just takes that initial twist to kind of get the copper to, to sit. Okay. Now that bolt is sat down too. So let me just do a continuity test real quick. Continuity test to make sure. I've checked many times that the positive side and the negative side don't touch because that would cause a short. But right now I just want to see if it's running through the bulbs. So the left side works and the right side works. So I know that when I plug this in, these light bulbs will light up. The next thing I've got to do is kind of bend these copper tabs back and over. And since I've got a piece of tape on the back of them, they kind of, they should bend over as one unit, one piece. See that? And I grab it and bend it back like that. From the back side, looks like this. Okay. And I plug this in. And I'm going to do one more continuity test. I'm going to plug it in and click, click. Should be good. Should be good. Now, because I can't see if um, these have crossed over at all, or if this plug is the right, the wrong shape, I'm gonna do one last continuity test. I wanna make sure that the positive and the negatives aren't touching. So I don't wanna short it out. I'll just pop a fuse somewhere. I don't wanna do that. Let me just do one last check to make sure Positive sides aren't touching the negative sides, and I'm gonna use the copper right here. So I've got no contact for that side. I've got no contact for that side. I know that's working. No contact, no contact. All right, and then lastly, just to get it back together, I'm gonna to put it in. These taps are gonna go in first. I'm gonna, gonna push it back down here. Click, and the whole thing goes together. And then I'm just gonna put it back into the truck the same way I pulled it out by just snapping it in. Uh, I'm gonna snap it in on the front side first, and then I'm gonna snap it in on the back side, and then I'm gonna put the screw in this little hole right here. That's it, all done. All right, we've got it all back in the truck and it works fine. So I'm gonna turn them on individually and then when I open the door, they all come on. So it works fine. All right, good luck with fixing your truck.